BS Risk Cloud is our latest product to join our Cyber Comply platform. In today's demonstration, we're going to cover asset management, risk assessment creation, conducting an asset based risk assessment, controls viewer, and the reports that this is going to be able to produce. To begin with, we launch onto Cyber Comply, which is hosted via a web browser in our cloud solution. Once inside the tool, there's a few simple steps you'll need to go through in order to begin your risk assessment. We will need to navigate to the top left-hand corner and utilize the drop-down menu, as you can see on screen. We are going to begin with our organization assets, as this is going to essentially be an asset-based risk assessment. On the left hand side, you will be able to see some assets that we have previously created. You will have the ability to import from an existing asset register from an Excel spreadsheet. Or we can set up and create a new asset from the beginning. You'll be asked to assign the asset type. You will then need to give this a reference. We need to choose who the operator of this will be. who the owner of the asset within the organization is, and lastly, the location where the asset is based. Once we have input all this information, we hit save, and it will now be an asset available to us to either work through on an asset-based risk assessment or to populate with additional controls, legal requirements, associated tasks, related processes, audit trails, related assets, any records that are currently stored within the asset, and lastly, a related risk. From this screen, we can choose to edit at a later stage, or we can run interim reports simply to show you information on the asset itself. Now that the asset has been built, we simply navigate to the top left-hand corner again, and we move down into the risk assessment itself. So, risk assessment creation. At the top here, we need to begin by selecting create new, and this will now take you through the steps necessary to set up the risk assessment. You'll be asked to give the assessment its name. You can then go through and adjust your likelihood and impact scales, like so. To scroll down further, you'll then see the context that is assigned to risk impact, so we can see confidential, integrity, and availability. We can add additional context at this stage, maybe financial. And enter into each one of these boxes what the impact is going to be on the business. We now select next, and this will take us into our score criteria. We have three available to us. We have broadly acceptable, tolerable and intolerable. We can edit these scales at any point by selecting edit and we just simply move or make our selection on the criteria score grid to suit our business requirements. Once we're happy with this, we select OK and this allows us to now save the risk assessment. We're now going to move on into conducting an asset based risk assessment. Using the three lines next to the name of our risk assessment, we select and add. We're now going to be introduced into the eight step wizard that you will need to complete in order to show your risk assessment against which asset you're going to do it against. Using the search box at the top here, we can quickly navigate to the asset that we have just created and we move on into what the threat is going to be. We are going to use theft or loss of that particular asset and once again, move on into the vulnerability. In here, we are again going to use the search option to help us navigate through the number of vulnerabilities. And then we're going to choose one that best suits our example for today. So we're going to use inadequate security awareness and training for staff. And select the next button to move on to what our initial risk score is going to be based on the scales that we would have input earlier. In this case, we're going to say that the likelihood is quite high and the impact based on losing such asset within the business 
or suffering a theft of the asset is going to be quite a high impact as well. You'll then have access to all of the confidentiality, integrity and availability impacts against the business. And we can now progress on to set our response. Here you'll have four options for retain, modify, share and avoid with their description following underneath each header. We're going to choose to modify or otherwise known as treat our risk this afternoon. And we're going to progress now on into which controls we wish to add. VS Risk Cloud utilizes both 27001, 2005 and 2013 as its core framework. The control that we are using today is going to be 7.2.2, which is Information Security Awareness, Education and Training. We have a drop down box here which will give you a more in depth description relating to that control. We can make our selection and now progress on, on to what our residual risk is going to be. We've now demonstrated the threat that applies to the asset, the vulnerability, our initial risk score, our treatment, and then finally the control we're going to treat the risk with. So now using the factors that we have just covered, we're going to go through and give it the residual risk score. Based on the control that we have put into place, the likelihood of the risk happening is now a lot lower. However, the impact against the business, should it still occur, is going to be quite high. Once our selection has been made at this stage, we come to our finalized risk area, where we now have an area we can assign the risk to. In our case, we are going to leave that with our CIO. And if there's any additional comments you need to add to a risk, we can enter so down here. We are now completed all of the steps that we need to against an asset based risk assessment and we can now select save and close. If we navigate to our risk assessment vigilant at the top here and expand, we will now have access to all risks assigned to the assessment itself. Selecting on this area gives us the threat and vulnerability information. If we expand on the risk summary, we're able to see the initial risk, the response, the residual risk and the owner. Below, using the tabs, we can see which controls are in place, as well as the option to quickly edit which control that is. If we need to make a reference to any legal requirements relating to GDPR or UK laws, we can do so here. If there is a, a task that you need to assign to one of the users of the portal moving forward, we can do so at this stage. Any related processes, Again, audit trails, related risks or assets, records, etc. At the top here, if we need to edit our risk, we can do so at this point. We can delete our risk whilst retaining all of the assets information. We can close all but one or minimize this area back into the vigilant risk assessment folder on the left. If we wish to run a report at this stage, we can do so. And this is going to be purely against the risk itself. So we're going to see which controls are in place, any clauses, processes, or assets that this may be referencing. At this stage, you may wish to run a risk treatment plan, which is one of the two reports that the VS Risk Cloud application is able to offer. We do so by selecting the green folder icon at the top here, and this will give us access into our risk treatment plan, going over the information such as the asset type, the threats, the vulnerability, our response, owner, controls that are in place, and their status, whether they are planned, whether they are implemented, and any tasks that may be assigned to that owner or to the risk itself. We're now going to move on into the controls viewer. This is equally where you're going to be able to run the statement of applicability, but also mark the implementation status of each control across the entire annex. We simply navigate to the top left hand corner again, utilizing the drop down menu. We're going to navigate to our framework that we're running the risk assessment against, in our case ISO 27001 2013. Once on this screen, we will see on the left hand side the entirety of the framework that we're utilizing. If we navigate to 7.2, the one that we have simply just used, and locate 7.2.2, Information Security Awareness, Education and Training. 
We can see next to this, there is a red star and that's simply showing that we are currently using it as part of our risk assessment. It is planned, but yet not implemented. Selecting on the individual control pulls up the controls information. If we drop down here, we have a requirement for the control, any implementation guidance, its status, and it's effective from and to states. Below here, you can reference if there's another control that is related to this one across all of the frameworks available to you. You'll be able to see which legal requirements that it is related to, any tasks assigned to the control itself, not just the risk, which processes the control is being used in, an audit trail, related assets, records, and finally, which risks this control is being utilized in. Over here on the far right hand corner, we have a drop down menu which allows us to mark whether the control is not considered, which is indicated by the orange question mark, whether it is selected and planned, which would then make the user uh, mark whether this has a task assigned to it. We can show selected and implemented or excluded, not applicable. We're going to mark that this control is selected and implemented within our business. We'll have an area where we can mark the reason for selection. Risk assessment is automatically included, but we have additional sections for business, contractual, statutory or regulatory requirements. Once we hit save on here, this will return us back to the initial screen. At this stage, we can assign this particular risk or control to a user. We're going to do so by using one of the task owners within the portal itself. We can give them their deadline and then any further information that we may wish to pass along. We now hit save. It will assign the task, the deadline and the user that is responsible. And at the top here, the last section you're going to come to is going to be the statement of applicability, the second of the two reports that VS Risk Cloud is able to produce. OK, now that we are in the statement of applicability, we can see straight away at the top here, it is illustrating what the report is referencing, the organization name, the date that the report was issued, and then the framework that we're utilizing across our risk assessment. If we now scroll through the statement of applicability, we can move down into the control that we have been working on. We can see here that the information security awareness, education and training has been selected and implemented, and then this is ready to be submitted for auditing purposes. Well, that covers some of the basics. A fully detailed tutorial from start to finish can be found on our YouTube channel. Links can be found in the video description below. Thank you for watching.